first uh, lecture in this uh, spring school on the thematic urban exploitation platform, UrbanTap. This is a, actually started as a project funded by the European Space Agency and is still supported by the European Space Agency, but evolves to a more or less independent economic uh, unit. So we will um, soon enter a more or less independent uh, stage. And uh, actually, I was a long time wondering how I will organize this uh, lecture here today. And uh, since most time I give more or less the more technical background on the platform itself, or I make more or less, um, because we're going to this commercial direction also, um, let's call it ad advertisement uh, uh, presentations. Um, but I think in, in the frame of uh, this event, it, it makes more sense to talk a bit more on the uh, uh, platform ecosystem or, or platforms uh, itself. So why choosing for a, a platform? Um, why a thematic exploitation platform? Then I will go a bit deeper in the example of Urban Tap. So I will just use the Urban Tap as an example for a platform. Um, give also a brief outlook on the Urban Tap and um, discuss also a bit the business model. We want to start with it. So this is maybe not uh, case specific that interesting, but I think it's quite interesting for uh, the participants to learn about uh, how the decision making process uh, takes place and what kind of thoughts are behind different options in uh, business models with this kind of platforms. And then I think we still have some time for, for questions. So um, yeah. Um, the, I must say the platform itself is uh, currently uh, under more or less a bit under construction since end of this year. We will completely move from the European Space Agency to an independent platform. So some of the modules are not completely uh, integrated because we have some updates. I can, I will later on show some of these updates, uh, but other modules I will present in the uh, the PowerPoint presentation just to give you an idea how the platform evolved and what are the net next stages of its uh, evolution. So digital platform ecosystem. So this is one slide with a lot of text. I think it's the only one with that much of text. Um, so I hear in the background there is some some maybe messages popping up. So I cannot read them. So if there's something important, please someone interrupt me and <laughs> raise a question. Um, I will, on the other hand, just continue with the presentation. Um, yeah. So digital platform ecosystems. Uh, why platform or what is a platform uh, anyhow? Um, by a platform, we refer to an organization that uses digital or any other emerging technologies to create value by facilitating or coordinating connections between two or more groups of users. And I will give some examples. Here are already three of them. One of the most famous platforms are Amazon, Facebook, and Uber. Here uh, with Amazon, we connect buyers and sellers. Facebook, more or less connecting in, on the social level, friends, family. Uh, but also businesses, actually, um, Uber connecting service providers and service users. This is already quite close to what we are doing with the Urban Tab. Um, and uh, these platforms have really the potential to change also the academic uh, community. And I think many of you probably also already have used some uh, Earth observation platforms for processing, for uh, data exchange, and, 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 and many more applications. Um, but besides from the academic uh, approach, it is also quite uh, a big potential behind it to uh, create new business models, to bring the, the downstream segment of the Earth observation um industry to really to 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 give them use the momentum and to bring this uh, technology and the new information that can be generated really to a business model to bring it that way also uh to the users and to 
bring it in the daily life of uh, the public. So here is a brief list of several different kind of uh, platforms. I already mentioned some of them. Um, what can be considered platforms? Also um, applications like uh, uh, Airbnb, uh, Medium uh, are considered as platforms and because always there's a, a video creator group and a extractor uh, of value group. So someone uh, provides some services and we have a second group that uh, uses these services. But of course, there can be also an overlap. So also a service user can generate new information with an application that is provided on a platform and can become also a creator of value. So in a platform, this is a, therefore we say, or name it more as platform ecosystem. This is much more complex than in standard um, piped um, value adding processes. And uh, this can be much more complex and I have several slides that can describe this actually quite, quite good. Um, this actually, this is a, a, a table that is a bit outdated, but it, I think still it um, really much underlines what I want to show here that on the left side, left hand side in 2008, that's not that long ago, right? Uh, we, we see some really quite famous large companies. Many of them are relatively old and have a long history. Uh, and these are the considered as the largest companies. Um, and in 2018, there are some changes in between until today, but here we see that uh, other companies uh, evolved and all of them, at least uh, the first, uh, or most of them actually have a platform as one of their business models, if it's not the main business model of them. And uh, therefore this platform ecosystem is a huge opportunity, but on the same time, or in the same time, there are also many platforms that uh, were developed in the last years and they did not really succeed on or are not on the market anymore. So this is also a very challenging environment. And uh, yeah, we can learn, of course, from those who made it, and but we can also learn from those who didn't made it. Uh, and uh, maybe this uh, presentation today gives, gives you a nice idea and uh, some of you are within uh, one of the very successful platforms in the future. I would very much uh, like to think of that, I, that I could somehow contribute to this. Yeah, and there's also uh, uh, more or less global change on uh, where the, this development is ongoing. So also here a bit outdated, but uh, if you compare 2013, where most of this uh, by then internet leaders, but mostly platform oriented um, companies are were located in uh, the US and uh, some other countries. And um, at least in 2018, this uh, uh, China very much uh, came up with new companies, Alibaba, for example, but also others. And uh, other regions of the world are not really present in there. So here's also, uh, yeah, we have some focus regions. And that was also one of the re reasons why ESA decided the European Space Agency to, um, yeah, fund here different activities. On the one hand, more processing related platforms, uh, called the DIAS platforms, maybe some of you already came in touch with them, uh, but also the uh, exploitation platforms and Urban uh, Tap is one of these exploitation platforms. Yeah, and of course, uh, if I mentioned already here, uh, Google or also Amazon, they have their own platforms and also in the section of Earth observation, they are quite strong. So Google Earth Engine, probably all of you worked already with, with this uh, platform, um, which is a very streamlined platform with a clearly defined user group. Um, the value creator group is 
not that heterogeneous than other platforms. Uh, Amazon Web Service is mostly a platform providing processing services, not that much um, um, other services like data or software. Um, Microsoft also with uh, the uh, planetary app now is on the market here on the processing side, very strong. But the thematic uh, side is not uh, covered that much. So um, this is one of the, let's say, advantages of the thematic exploitation platforms. So, but why, where are the advantages? Uh, I already tackled this topic a bit. So uh, on the left hand side, you see the more traditional way of uh, earth observation processing and especially in the academic, but also on, in the business model, we had uh, on the one hand side, uh, data creators, the downstream, uh, which are or in the downstream sector, the, the, the ground segment, the satellite data that is created. We had some processing, sometimes local processing, sometimes on, on, on joint servers. Then we had some um, scientists or developers uh, working with this data. There's an output and this output was then provided to some end users. Uh, in the platform ecosystem, this changes a lot. So uh, we can think, and I mentioned it earlier, of um, value creators and value extractors. So the creators actually um, provide different kind of services. And I think my next slide goes more into detail here. So we have um, providers of algorithms. So this is uh, one service that can provide it on a platform. Uh, Algo as a service is uh, here one of the buzzwords. Um, then we have, uh, besides algorithms processing directly the data, we have complete software environments and software uh, providing uh, provided as a tool. So software as a service is here a buzzword. Then of course the processing, the data hosting has to take um, place somewhere. So we have uh, mostly cloud providers that provide the in environment. We also have uh, data providers. So also data is a service that can be provided. So data owners, local authorities, uh, academic institutions, um, companies can share their data uh, on a um, with a free license, or they can sell it as a service uh, also on a platform. At the same time, expertise can be shared and brought in. So here's more this consulting part, or if there's need to interpret some of the results or to um, facilitate the processing, to uh, manage all these different services, bring them together, that also can be provided as a service. And the platform itself, actually, in a in a very clear definition, is not is just the platform where all this takes place. So it's the service the platform the platform provides is the platform as a service, just providing the infrastructure for um, scientists, software developers, algorithm developers, for cloud providers, and experts and data owners to share their services to bring them together and to provide this to the community the, com the community can decide which of the services they want to use is it a free service commercial service um, um, do they just want to extract information or do they want to generate new information do they want to share this new information uh, do they want to generate a service out of it? Is this a new business model they want to develop? So this is more or less why this is called platform ecosystem, because here are much more interconnections between the different stakeholders of this um, in this environment. And this provides an enormous potential. And uh, therefore, uh, platforms are considered really as uh, the yeah, for the, for for in the, in the, in the, from an economic point of view, as the new oil. <clears throat> and there has been several studies, and if you 
look also for scientific literature, there are right now many publications in different kind of technical but also economic journals coming out uh, describing what is necessary to really create and establish a successful and sustainable platform um, or this platform as a service itself. And uh, um, here, Eric van Meulen, I used some of his uh, uh, figures, um, um, collected quite a lot of this information. I did also some uh, research on it and he identified actually six main fields that are important to make a platform or platform ecosystem uh, successful. And on the one hand, it's the content, then it's of course the technology. We need the community to work with the data and also provide uh, services. We need a culture, how these um, services are used and uh, how new information are communicated. Within the community, we need relationships because also value creators and value consumers need somehow to interact, but we also need kind of a leadership. So we need some, um, let's say, uh, main users or uh, yeah, users that inspire other users to develop new things that bring in new ideas and uh, move forward that might be, for example, uh, large NGOs that use one platform and say, oh, that's very interesting for us. So we want to use this platform and invest also on this, on the services. Uh, that might be some companies that are very innovative and bring uh, in new services that are then used by um, the community. Uh, yeah. and. Uh, here, that's, I won't go here through the entire slide, but I, I uh, collected also some um, more specific uh, um, reasons for why uh, a platform can become successful or what is necessary for a platform to become successful. Um, I mentioned most, most of them already. So on the technology part, it's, uh, and that's something I think most of you know is a user-friendly interface. Of course, some programmers uh, prefer uh, more or less uh, um, not that friendly interface, but a more effective one. Uh, I can also can understand that, but to really also have a commercial success, user-friendly interface is important. Big data, meaning we need data, but also it should be capable, especially in the EO context to work with big data. Algorithms are important that are already available. You don't want to develop everything from the scratch. Um, APIs, a platform shouldn't be a, an alone standing a tool. It must be somehow also be able to be integrated into other services. So here again is this ecosystem uh, approach uh, visible. Yeah, of course I will share the slides so maybe you can go here in a, if you want a bit more in detail, but uh, this more or less describes very well why it is important to have or what is important for a successful platform. Now I move a bit closer to the urban thematic exploitation platform. Um, in 2014 actually already, so that's already eight years ago, the European Space Agency decided um, with the emerging platform, success of platforms, especially in the US, that uh, we need also some platforms in uh, Europe that uh, uh, can provide services and at least to start this downstream sector on the platform side, um, they on one hand introduced the semantic exploitation platforms and a bit later also the processing uh, component, the DIAS platforms, uh, which is currently also very much uh, developed. The idea of the semantic exploitation platforms in the beginning was uh, that researchers can develop their scientific research with AO data um, and uh, also can share uh, proven algorithms um, that uh, toolboxing, toolboxes can uh, offer that support exploitation of AO data 
for service providers that they can offer scalable operational services to the community. So here, if uh, an end user wants to have a specific product for his or her region, uh, for example, main end users in the beginning are mostly uh, local authorities uh, that they can um, purchase the service and uh, that this service is so stable that it can be transferred also uh, within the regions. Infrastructure providers, that's uh, also a component that was mentioned before. So uh, we need the computing resources for data exploitation. Uh, in the beginning of the TAPS, there were a lot of local infrastructure use. So uh, the soft uh, service centers of uh, big univers universities, uh, with the urban tab, we had uh, several infrastructures. It was one located with the DLR, the German Aerospace Center. One was uh, at the Czech, uh, the Czech supercomputing center at the University of Ostrava. And uh, we had also a computer cluster uh, in, in uh, Hamburg, one of the commercial service providers uh, actually uh, um, used this or brought this in. Data owners, that is actually very, very important for the thematic exploitation platforms um, that uh, relevant data sets that are really interesting for the community are somehow provided. So because users really want to not only have the processing they want to have ready to use products, products they don't want to develop themselves, maybe they cannot develop in, in, in the frame of their projects uh, themselves. So there must be something already they can start with. So this is really important. Then also some uh, community that allows to share and exchange on developments. And we then we need to connect to the end users. They have to consume the resources either on the scientific level or also uh, in a commercial context. And um, yeah, I mentioned already there were several uh, thematic exploitation platforms uh, started by uh, ESA. On the right hand side you see them, that's the coastal tab focusing on the coastal environment, the forest tab, uh, the geohazard tab which is which was the first uh, to be funded actually, uh, the hydrology tab, the polar tab, uh, food security tab and uh, the urban tab. They're all still uh, um, under uh, development and are still um, more or less um, operational. So the GeoHazard set, for example, is a fully operational thematic exploitation platform. As I mentioned, it started earlier. Um, the food security tab uh, is already quite far in the operational phase and the urban tab is now at the edge. I mentioned end of the year, we want to bring it in completely operational mode. Therefore, currently we are undergoing some uh, updates on the platform. So this slide uh, describes a bit uh, the overall environment uh, of the development of the thematic exploitation platforms. So you see the tabs in the more or less middle of the slide in the second um, in the second column yeah, with the abbreviation tab, uh, and then there are several. Uh, exploitation layers and tiers that uh, are supporting the development. Um, for example, the data generation layer where some uh, main um, data information, operational data uh, providers come in, then um, some resources are necessary. Uh, here, the DIAS layers of which are also connected with Copernicus are uh, one of our backbones for the infrastructure right now. So we moved from the local infrastructures of the single entities to this cloud processing services uh, or can combine uh, both of them. Then there are different service layers, but they're also connected. So we have the tabs and I will later on also show that we're currently connecting with the Euro Data Cube. Uh, so also this uh, uh, data cube technology can be then exploited with the tab. And then uh, we have different 
uh, entities that communicate with the platforms and uh, this is uh, the public sector, the scientific sector and the industry and here there are different approaches actually between the different platforms. Uh, for example, the Polar tab is a very, very scientifically oriented uh, thematic exploitation platform because here are not that many um, um, commercial interests. Um, with the Urban tab, we have actually quite a lot of uh, commercial interest, uh, but at the same time also scientific and uh, NGO interests. So here we have to actually uh, handle much more interests uh, that makes it often also a bit complicated to satisfy all expectations and demands. Uh, and therefore we have a bit more services available than the other platforms. Maybe some of you already know uh, or explored some of these platforms. So maybe you see that later on with the examples I will share that um, we have um, some, some additional functionalities. So where are we right now? Um, here's a bit of an overview how this development was ongoing. So the first concept 2013, I mentioned that in 2014, it started with the geohazards tab and then the other tabs came in. Also the urban tab. Um, so with the blue color, you can follow the development with different phases. There were different developments. In the beginning, we started more as a scientific platform then it was decided that we more strive for a commercial um, a platform to also be sustainable because also the support by ESA, it was clear that it will end some some day. So we need uh, some um, uh, some to generate some um, revenues actually to further maintain the platform and also introduce new developments by time. So. So the sustainability is very close connected to the commercial success of the platform. And it's always difficult for us, for example, the German Aerospace Center, we are completely scientific research organization. We don't have this commercial background, but we have some partner organizations in our consortium that are companies, um, for example, Brockmann's Consult, some of you might know, uh, Charadue in Italy, um, or GZAT in the Czech Republic, they're all companies and they bring in the commercial background um, and knowledge necessary for um, making this uh, a successful spin-off in the end. So what was, what was the motivation for an urban thematic exploitation platform? And now you see already the, the uh, style of the slides changed a bit. So I now move completely to the urban uh, thematic exploitation platform. Um, so it, it was clear that especially in the urban context there are many challenges and earth observation can contribute to these challenges and you all, I think you're all aware of uh, what potential earth observation has especially in the urban context so I won't go into detail here. Uh, I listed here some challenges but especially services on a platform might even contribute to a more consistent development uh, and the data sharing and in the same time also processing uh, capabilities of a platform uh, might be of uh, interest for many organizations, scientific and commercial organizations. So we have several subsystems at the urban tab and uh, the four major so far technical components are group include a web portal, uh, Earth Observation Data Catalog uh, with uh, web processing services capabilities. Uh, then we have something that the other tabs do not have. It's a visualization analytics toolbox, VSAT. I will later on show some examples here. And uh, we can access different high performance processing infrastructures like the DIAS platforms, but also uh, local uh, infrastructures. And all the components have, uh, have open standard specifications such as OCCI or OGC. So here we are complete open, completely open and uh, um, so this makes it also possible actually to connect to other platforms. I mentioned already that the uh, data portfolio is important and 
let's say one of the flagship products we have currently on the platform is the World Settlement Footprint, which is a DLR uh, development. You see here an example of Dubai. Um, it's actually an annual layer of uh, settlement development. It's a global uh, product, so this is uh, openly available, can be exploited on the platform, but you can also download it from other repositories. Currently, this is the uh, data product uh, providing the annual development from 1985 to 2015. Uh, the new developments go uh, to uh, the uh, 2019 and uh, also the 22 uh, products and the continuation of these products is being developed. Um, this is one of the products which is very important uh, for many users, especially the large users of our platform, like the um, um, like UN Habitat and the World Bank, actually, which are main NGO users, uh, really focus on these products for uh, exposure and uh, population development. Um, Here's another example of uh, Beijing. You see, this is uh, the status of the settlements in 2015 uh, in the region of Beijing in China. You see these different uh, patterns, which is from an urban geographer's perspective, like I have very interesting. Uh, and if I color code this information with the different years and the development phases, you see also that this temporal component is actually something that really uh, makes this interesting in several regards. Um, see with red colors, the settlement that existed already in 1985, and then with the subsequent color coding, the new developments, and uh, it very much depends in which regions you, you look, you see like this, this fringes of, uh, if you work with uh, interferometer analysis uh, in SAR data, uh, these developments and uh, this di spatial and temporal dynamics actually that makes uh, this a quite valuable data source. And this is actually something, for example, we bring in, uh, but of course we connect also with other um, resources since uh, we are connected, closely connected with ESA, we very much include Copernicus services and Copernicus data layers, ready to use data layers from the land monitoring system, but also uh, from the climate data store to combine it with the existing layers. And of course, not only EO products, but also access to the archives like the Sentinel archives, the Landsat archive to create new information layers and to bring them together. So you find uh, the urban thematic exploitation platform with this link. So you see in the top of this slide, urban tab point A you. This is the landing page and it shows already the, with uh, the community workspace, with the data and product showroom and the earth observation processing services, our main services that we currently provide, but which will be, uh, are currently updated and some will be also replaced. I will briefly introduce them anyhow and show you then also what the next developments will be. Yeah, so. The community workspace is actually where we bring together the different uh, uh, communities, so developers, uh, but also projects. For example, on the lower left, you see one project uh, I'm working with my team, the Flutterdep project. Actually, this screenshot is a bit older. So here uh, it has a few members from Vietnam uh, as an institution, uh, the, the University of Hue, then the DLR, then we have um, the United Nations University as a member, and uh, the fourth member is, uh, uh, yeah, the hydrological uh, developers uh, from Heidelberg University. And uh, within this um, community workspace, you can develop project ideas, share the data you develop, but also the code you develop, and also um, can um, um, have a look what the others in your project are currently working on and uh, how much processing is ongoing. So you see um, the 
applications that are used, the processes that are tested, and who is working actually with the data. This is where we want to try to bring together the community. Then we have the Earth Observation Processing Services. Here we can access, or the users actually can access, and also the third-party service providers. So I just don't forget that this is a platform service. We provide a platform as a service. We provide the access and the infrastructure, but the uh, third-party service providers, so commercial entities, but also scientific entities can provide a service on the platform and users can extract the service. So we provide here the infrastructure, the access to the archive data, but others can provide, like on the right-hand side, a processor that makes use of existing data. So this is a, a processor, for example, from uh, Procman Consult, a commercial entity, uh, using the uh, World Settlement Footprint, the product I just provided for process, so, um, some temp spatial temporal aggregation of uh, data in there. So this is actually something uh, how it should be. So a user can go use this uh, existing algorithm, produce new information data sets, can upload this data set, but also download it and uh, use it on a local machine. Um, users and third party providers can bring their own algorithm. So this is also one of the uh, new uh, buzzwords, bring your own algorithm uh, in mostly container uh, container uh, structure. So uh, Docker solution is uh, what we favor currently in uh, UrbanTap, but that also other platforms uh, do this, which allow actually to develop new services, uh, algorithms in a specific environment and to not only host this uh, developed server, then on a and host this developed algorithm on a specific server, but also can uh, host this algorithm on several servers. For example, here on in the urban tab environment, but in the same time, the same algorithm can be also used in the your data cube or uh, used as pure processing on a DIAS platform. So this allows actually the effort to to really make use of the effort to develop an algorithm. Um, this uh, and, and lowers the threshold for a company to focus only on one um, platform, but to develop something and bring it on several platforms and make use of the um, advantages of each platform. So then we also have the data and product showroom, um, which is more or less this visualization analytics toolbox I mentioned. Here we have more or less um, Let's say you can you can imagine that like a GIS project, you have uh, uh, some data layers you uh, you upload. Uh, you have some existing data layers on the platform. You can bring them together to make analysis with them, make use of the attributes, in case of vector data, and uh, make visualizations and also some analysis resulting in diagrams and figures. And uh, I just give you some examples how this can look like. This, for example, is one project we had with the city of Kigali in Rwanda, where we have uh, urban footprint uh, or urban footprint mapping. Um, here, the comparison between 2009 and 2015 with underlying statistics of uh, the district level and uh, you can um, um, actually create this visualization. You can share the visualization with your stakeholders and also share the data. Um, and you can of, all, of course also uh, decide on whom can access uh, the data. Here's uh, one example we did in cooperation with the city of Oslo on uh, urban green uh, and urban green structure. So again, urban green was derived from earth observation data in a processing environment. Then this information was uh, integrated here in the VSAT tool. And 
with this, it can be now analyzed on this also district level and you can generate or stakeholders also can generate this visualization. So this is also quite important with this uh, tool that uh, for us, at least for us, it was important since we have a lot of uh, applied projects and we often experience that we don't uh, always interact with GIS experts, but we interact with uh, decision makers in local authorities and uh, they don't want to install a GIS system on a computer to work with the layers. They want uh, really to directly make use of uh, the prepared environment and that's possible actually here to integrate the layers, to pre-analyze layers, to generate these diagrams, but also to allow the end user to play a bit with the system and to generate new diagrams. So they can also access the attribute tables, they can make uh, analysis and these um, diagrams are then automatically generated. This is a similar example for the SDG indicator 11.3.1, that's uh, the relation between uh, the population change and an urban area change. Uh, and you can see here for four countries in Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand and Vietnam, how they actually develop differently over time. Uh, so the, the different colored bars you see are uh, the years of 1985, 19. 1995, uh, oh, 1985, 1995, 2005 and 2015 and uh, you see the relation between both of them and that indicates uh, the sustainability of a development and the land use actually in comparison to the population development. This is actually quite important for many uh, agencies for their SDG reporting. Also here the platform can contribute and if some stakeholders want very specific solutions they can also integrate uh, modeling approaches. For example here for the city of Prague in the Czech Republic an urban climate model was integrated to simulate the land use change and the effect on the urban temperature. This was also actually a quite interesting um, development. Yeah, I will skip this slide. So with the next, I will just skip a bit to some uh, of the, yeah, I hope you can still can see that. So where are we moving right now? So um, we already introduced this uh, new functionality uh, with the urban tab, it's a storyline. Um, this is actually a service that has to be uh, requested uh, by users and has to develop together since here a lot of information has to go uh, uh, in hand. So this allows actually to integrate earth observation information and outputs into an interactive storytelling um, that allows uh, to bring news on a, on a new level. So you can have an introductory text, then you have some here, like here, some diagrams that explain in this case, the, urban, the total green areas per city in square kilometers, the green, but with this, you can also um, provide more information and this can be briefly, um, 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 used and and uh, and you can even select then in here different cities. For example, this was an example for Abidjan. If you select Arusha in Tanzania, it uh, actually updates. Should update for that. Ah, the connection is a bit slow. I think you hear it. Um, yeah, it switches to the city as you might have seen and then should, oops, sorry, go down here, select again Arusha and then you see here the urban green area for Arusha for different uh, years and here for example the green area flows for Arusha. So if you write this kind of block entry or news, 
you can share it actually for several cities, but the user in the end can decide on what he or she is focusing on, on what he or she is interested in. And uh, uh, you can always make some rules how the user can uh, continue with the Anna or the reading of the data if he or she is interested in a specific um, in a specific uh, result. Uh, this can be actually um, um, clicked, and then the results are updated below. Then a uh, third or second uh, new development is actually the data cube integration. I already mentioned that uh, we are currently working on this. So let me just have a look here. Yeah. So we have a demo here for the Republic of uh, Cyprus in the Mediterranean Sea. And here we have a specific uh, vegetation product actually uh, integrated. And this is a high resolution, temporal high resolution time series on vegetation uh, development, VPP in this case. And uh, if I click somewhere here in the map, then for the pixel I just selected, each of the products is actually calculated. And you see on the right hand side with the diagrams that this is uh, being calculated backwards in time. Uh, until 2017. So you see the results in this case for this use case from 2017 to 2020. Maybe it's a bit small, but you can zoom in a bit here. And you see the development of this product. And um, you see also for this uh, data product, the uh, different developments in time. And this is uh, being processed in a cloud environment, uh, in a um, data cube environment. And this is something we are currently working on and that will be integrated in the next days actually. Therefore, we uh, are more or less in maintenance on the platform, on the platform as a new service. So users can either decide on a specific algorithm processing on Earth observation data and then doing the analysis in time to, to provide this time series analysis um, or to use existing products and analyze them on a specific uh, topic. And then we are also updating uh, the viewer. So we move uh, to Argentina and for example, select here the world settlement footprint. Oh, let's zoom, oh, maybe zoom in here. Then here you can see the new development, the World Settlement Footprint 2019, which is a 10 meters resolution global product. So if, you, if I see, zoom in a bit more, you see actually the building blocks um, and a very detailed, maybe I can uh, use uh, as a background layer, the satellite information. So you see the level of uh, detail actually. I hope the inter internet connection allows to update this so that you can see that. Uh, and this is on a global level and you see the level of detail and uh, also the correctness of the information actually also for this kind of um, um, residential areas with a lot of green you see actually where the build up area is and where not. So this is actually uh, allows new applications so far, we only have the main layers in there, but they can also be, of course, combined with other layers. So I have to look a bit on time. So um, yeah, so this is actually what we are currently developing on. And now I miss again the mouse. Where is it? Sorry for that. Somehow I cannot really change between the screens very well. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. 
these are the examples I just showed. Yeah, also the WSF uh, evolution is in there with the temporal um, development of the cities you can see here. Um, yeah, so what's next? Next, I already introduced the your data cube uh, potential here. Another example with the NDVI, also the time series, in this case for uh, Limassol, one of the cities, um, uh, port cities of uh, Cyprus. We can see the development. Um, this was the example I showed. Uh, yeah, let me conclude with the business model. So what, uh, what thoughts do we have with the business model? That's actually not that uh, simple. So we have a lot, lot of discussions and if you have used some platforms already, there are some that are completely free, so like completely sponsored like the Google Earth Engine. Um, I already mentioned that this is on long term not possible for us because for the sustainability of a platform you need kind of base funding and uh, ESA won't uh, fund these uh, activities uh, that much longer. Therefore for all platforms uh, this sustainability must be reached with some commercial products to actually at least um, um, support the maintenance of the existing services but also the update and integration of new services on a platform. So um, of course a free trial is important um, to actually make the users uh, work with the existing functions to learn to use them and also to show them what potential a platform has. Also to stay in exchange with users they are not not already customers just the users so they can also state their demands in, for example, one of the community um, um, uh, community sections. Um, so we can discuss with them if there is a functionality that is needed or they need, and uh, if this can be provided as a service. But they can, of course, also get in touch with their data uh, service providers that uh, who can then develop some services that are designed uh, spe specifically for them. Um, then pay per use for registered users. Um, so here uh, it is important what is uh, being used. Is it the processing or is it uh, the visa tool for example to, to do analysis. So here different um, functionalities are needed to count the uh, processing effort but also the time that is spent on in a visa scope to actually develop or uh, persons that develop a visa scope. Then there's a subscription model which is always a bit difficult especially in the processing. So of course there can be a subscription but if the processing is exceeding some amount there needs to be a threshold where we cannot uh, that cannot be exceeded. Um, so here we have to develop some uh, models we already did. Um, Felix? Visa scopes, yes. Yeah, you have five more minutes. Perfect. Uh, I, this is actually one of my last to, slides and I hope that some leave, questions are left. Yeah. Okay, if you want to leave some, some space for, yeah. for questions. Thanks for, for reminding me, yeah. So, uh, and there are quite custom offerings. So, um, since uh, we are quite rather flexible with, um, um, our developments, um, we provide this option actually to um, extend the functionalities of a platform to allow new developments and maybe and hope of course that this can, these new developments can be funded with this. Yeah, um, yeah this I mentioned already and uh, in this transition phase, so ESA is reducing the funding, we are striving for more external funding. There are some, uh, there's a transition and ESA provides actually the network of resources where users can apply for uh, the processing and also the development on platforms, on all kinds of platforms, not only UrbanTap, but all platforms. And uh, this is actually globally available. Uh, the same for the um, OCRE, where um, the European uh, union actually is, or the European Commission is providing um, for scientific community processing on um, European platforms. So it's globally available but focusing on European platforms. Oh, no. 
So it took a bit longer than expected. Uh, so I hope we have some time left for questions or. Yeah. Thank you, Felix. Much, know, <laughs> so are there any questions? Uh, okay, I will ask here if there are any questions. Um, well, congratulations for the presentation. It was very nice and very interesting for us. Um, I have a question, maybe you told, but I, did, I, miss, I miss it. Uh, how do you validate, for example, the products, uh, the urban products and 10 meter resolution globally? Uh, because I saw for our city was excellent <laughs> just by seeing. And how do you validate this kind of product globally? Yeah, so for this specific product, the World Settlement Footprint, we had a collaboration actually with Google and we had globally more than 1 million reference points uh, digitized. Uh, they have access to uh, different options to, to do this. Actually, there you might know from some uh, online applications that you have to choose, for example, between this is a, a, a bike or a bus uh, to access it and they have something si similar also for this uh, urban coverage. So we had 1 million reference points here and we used also some additional very high resolution data for the evaluation of specific cities to understand a bit more what is happening there. Um, so this is for our internal product but you mentioned also <laughs> my very important point because we allow also to have external data on the platform. And we, of course, cannot validate external data. So we need some kind of um, user reference here. And there's a big discussion if we just allow all users to bring all the data on the platform or not. So we will uh, here have a system where we mark some published validated data. So this has to be then provided and uh, it's more or less a quality sign because they need at least a scientific publication with it or some other really where they prove that this is a good data product. Uh, for example, in GEOS, there are a lot of data in there, but it's not all validated. It's really hard to understand what is valuable, what is the level of detail. And uh, for the others, actually, we only can then uh, allow to comment other users on the data products. Um, so far, we don't have that many external products on the platform that we really have to struggle with that, but uh, we already discussed it that might be very complicated in the future. We will see. So this is a very important topic. Thank you for mentioning this. Thank you, Felix. Um, we have a couple more questions, if you can briefly answer them. I try. So we move to coffee break, but they are there in the chat. One of them is if if there are, if these products are available for Latin American countries, or some of them at least. And then Marcos also asked if uh, Urban Tap has worked in the development of rural communities or rural uh, roads uh, and in things related to geography or uh, relief in Latin America. Yeah. So um, these products I, I shared in the beginning are really global products. So they are available globally. So they cover actually all settlements. Um, so also Latin America and uh, all rural areas too. Um, these are available via the platform. But if you just want to work with this uh, data, you can also, um, it's sometimes more convenient to download it actually directly from uh, the DLR repository. So if you, you can Google it, but you can also write me an email if you don't find it. There you can download it tiled. It's quite easy and straightforward on the platform. It's uh, sometimes a bit more difficult until we have the update. Um, so just write me an email. Um, if you need these data sets, with road information, we did not work that much. So we integrate, of course, OSM data, for example, or for specific applications, we also receive from local authorities uh, data. And here, maybe this connects it to the geography question. Um, we have a lot of um, um, 
use cases that are in this visa tool, for example, where we have land cover analysis, we integrate different kind of data. This is then uh, visualized and analyzed. And here we have a lot of external data that is then also could be combined, but this is not always available globally. So that very much depends. Uh, so far there is, for example, no processor that it extracts automatically from uh, Sentinel or Lanza data, the road infrastructure. Um, but that would be in, if there is a uh, service provider who wants to um, provide this as a service, would be an option for this company to develop this processor on Landsat or Sentinel uh, and then to integrate it on a platform. And on the Share other hand, the user the coming. Platform. Exactly. That, that's the, this ecosystem uh, approach. Oh, okay. yeah, that's